fully started. Okay, so um, as I said before, you're all in listen-only mode. However, we would love to answer your questions as we go. So if you have questions for our presenters, please um, enter those into the questions box. And then as they're presenting and as we get time, we will answer those questions for you. We're also gonna have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. Um, so just as you're thinking of them, go ahead and type them in and we can go through those as we get them. And with that said, um, Laura, do you wanna go ahead and start? Sure. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Um, so the way that we came up with our idea for the fundraiser was actually my best friend approached me and she kind of wanted to help us. So we came up with a beef and beer, which are very popular from where we live. Um, I think the very first step that we took was we contacted Susan Hedstrom. I messaged her on Facebook and she's the one who kind of took down all the information that we wanted and she set up the website for ticket sales. So it was really easy. Everyone could just click on the link and purchase the tickets ahead of time. And they had all the information about where the event was being held and the time and the price and all that stuff. Um, once, to really get the word out, once we um, had the link set up, I made a Facebook event. And I we just invited everyone that we knew. And um, so the event page had all the info, it had the link to purchase the tickets, it had um, a list of some of the raffle items that would be there to kind of draw people in to see what they could win and what they could have a chance at getting, and we also mentioned that we would be having a DJ and a photo booth there, so it kind of gave people an idea of what they could expect if they came to our event. And as time went on and it got closer, every week and then every couple days I'd make a Facebook status or my friend would make a Facebook status and we just remind people we put a picture of Tommy or and it would always include the link to purchase tickets so that's how we definitely sold the most tickets was by them buying them online first um, and then as the event got closer and we saw how many we had sold we decided to announce that we would sell tickets at the door too which ended up being good because we got even more people to come that way. Um, so once we had all that set up, we had to get all of our raffle items. So I wrote a story, our story, and included pictures of Tommy and made a slideshow. And then every time we would email a place or um, go into a business, we'd give them the flyer with the story or we'd email them a slideshow when we were asking them for raffle items and donations. So I think that really helped um, with people because they could see, they could put a face to what they were donating to. So that was good. Um, also, we would just walk into places. If we were walking by, we'd be like, hey, this one looked good. Just walk right in and I'd say 99% of the time they would just give us something right then and there, whether it was a gift certificate or they just, grabbed a couple items in their store for us to kind of put our own little basket together. So that was good. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> then we decided we were going to do a raffle, a 50-50, and a silent auction, which sounds like a lot, but they all had their pros and cons. The raffle was definitely the most popular, I think, because as soon as people came in and registered, they would buy raffle tickets no matter what. And once they went and saw everything that we had, they would come back and buy more because they saw something that they really wanted. So that was good. We definitely saw a lot of people coming back and forth um, to buy tickets. Um, Laura, can I ask you a question? Sure. How did you decide between what to raffle and what to silent auction? Um, so we only we had like 46 items total, and we only only the four um, pretty much. I guess the highest ticket items were the silent auction. It was like a two-night stay, like a bed and breakfast, Philly's tickets, um, a necklace from a jeweler, and uh, I forget the fourth one. So those were like we just kept it kept it to four, and they seemed like the most um, 
high ticket item. Oh, it was a six month membership to the YMCA. So. Oh, great. Yeah, so there were some, and they were kind of more, a little more flashy than some of the other things, yeah. in my opinion. So that's kind of how we decided that. Um, so let's see. So like I said, my friend Michelle, she was a huge help. She did so much for us with getting raffle items and emailing people and going into businesses. And then really it was amazing how many people were willing to help out the day of. So I would say don't be afraid to ask for help because you'll be amazed at what people will do for you. Um, we had some friends come early and we kind of gave them jobs. We had one, one friend walking around the event with a raffle ticket roll and a purse and just going around to people and saying, you want to buy some tickets? And they didn't really turn her down, so she had a purse full of money by the end of the night. Um, we had someone working the door at the registration, and we also had two friends that would help when we were calling out the winners. Someone would write down the number, and then the other person would hand out the thing. So it was, it was pretty smooth how we ended up handing everything out. How many how many people did you have in attendance? Would you say um, they the total that they charged us for was like 161. Wow. But I think there was a few more people that kind of slid under the radar mm -hmm. <laughs> for them. So they paid us, but we didn't. They didn't count them, which mm -hmm. was good. Um, so I would say probably between 160 and 180 was our total. Okay. And I think the majority of all those ticket sales were pre-sold on the FPWR website. And how did you do that? Did the did the restaurant charge per head? And yes. Then... They actually, um, they, it was $15 a person, and it was all you can drink, and then um, they had dinner. So they gave us, when we got there, they gave us a certain number of wristbands. Like, they counted how many they gave us, and then however many we gave back was how they determined how many people were there. Okay. So it made it pretty easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and kids didn't need a wristband, so we ended up making a lot of money on kids because kids um, bought tickets ahead of time, but we ended up not getting charged for them. So that was good. That's good. Um, and then what do you think you'll do differently next year? Um, I think that we didn't explain the silent auction well enough. It seems like people didn't really get it. We didn't do like a last minute countdown for it. We kind of were just like, okay, it's time to announce the winners. So it was a little shaky. And also I made a slideshow of all of our beautiful kids and I tested it at home and it worked. But I didn't test it on their equipment and it ended up not working. So I would yeah. probably go on their equipment and test it before. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. It, it ends up being a good good event. We had a DJ and a photo booth, so that was fun. And yeah, we raised a good amount of money, and everyone seemed to have a good time. That is great. And this was your first event? Yep, our first. Awesome. Is there anything else that you want to talk about before we move? Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, well, thanks so much for sharing with us. Um, that's pretty exciting. It's, it looks like you had an awesome turnout for your first event. Yeah, we did. We're excited to see what next year will bring. Yeah. Do you think you'll do the, some, the same thing, the Tommy's Beef and Beer, next year? I think so. Maybe get a bigger place because it was getting a little tight with how many people we had, which yeah. is good. <laughs> that's a very good problem to have. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much, Laura, for sharing. Yeah, no problem. Okay, and um, I'm going to go ahead and mute you. That way yeah. we don't have as much interference. And Laura Measley, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, you want to go ahead and start? Sure. So um, as Sarah said, my name is Laura Measley, and I have a son, Jack, who's two. And um, we got involved with One Small Step through Sarah's event last summer, and we're just inspired to try to do something um, and host something on our own this year. And um, in order to get started, we just started really by talking about our interests with family and friends. So I should back up. We live in Indianapolis right now, but neither my husband or I are from Indianapolis. And we actually both have a lot of family in northeastern Indiana and the metro Detroit area in Michigan. 
So when we started talking about the event, we were actually home for the holidays in Michigan, talking with our family and friends, and just kind of casually made a remark to one of my best friends that lives in Michigan um, about, wouldn't it be great if we could host something in Michigan, and it would be um, really fun to bring an event to Michigan. Um, and she just sort of took it and ran with it in a way. Um, she works for a doctor who's a nephrologist and has done National Kidney Foundation events at a particular restaurant called Como's. Um, and so once she mentioned that to me, she just kind of said, well, let me ask um, the doctor that I work for in Como's and we'll see if they're interested in, in hosting something related to PWS. So that's probably my biggest tip is just if you, if you feel inclined and you have the intent, just start talking about it with people because I think that was the biggest eye-opener for me is I didn't know how connected my family and friends really were to event venues or um, potential sponsors or silent auction um, donors and, and those types of things. So by casually mentioning it, it's really how we sort of got the whole thing kicked off. Um, so that's probably my biggest tip and my biggest learning curve was just to not be afraid to mention it to anyone and everyone because you'll be amazed at who you know and who they know and how it can all be pulled together and just how generous people are once they know the cause and the story. Um, I, I agree with Laura Capone that it was very rare that we had anyone turn us down for a donation of some sort. So um, I think it's hard to get over that curve of asking and not being shy about it, as much you do. Um, it's really amazing how people will step up and help you. So again, we started with the intent and the idea. We reserved the space, and then we designed a logo and set it on a date and a schedule. And then it was all about getting the awareness out. So here's where we talked to Susan Hedstrom again, like Laura Capone said. We talked to her early and often, and um, quite often probably, <laughs> she would say. But this was our first event, and we really wanted it to go smoothly, and um, we couldn't have done it without Susan. So she suggested some things that they have on the either the FBR website um, or things that she could send us examples. So we did, um, for our event, the very first thing we did was a Facebook shout out um, to pretty much everyone we know via our personal pages. We never really created an event page, which is something I would do differently um, if we do this again. Um, we did we did electronic um, shout outs via Facebook and then email. And then we also did save the date postcards because a lot of my family um, in Michigan aren't always online and check their email on Facebook. So we still did some the old fashioned way and sent out save the date postcards. Um, and then we also created a sponsorship letter that um, we sent around to our other co-hosts, which were some of my family and friends in Michigan, and we made copies for them so that they could take around to local Michigan businesses and um, leave behind and um, information about the event, information about PWS, and information about Jack. Um, so when we were thinking about the event, we were kind of thinking about what we wanted it to be, and again, we sort of modeled it after some of the National Kidney Foundation events that Como's was used to putting on, but we wanted to do some extra things as well. So we started thinking about what we could do for our event, and again, we solicited donations of anything and everything. <laughs> um, once I got over my initial shyness about asking, I became very good at asking. <laughs> <laughs> so again, we... You know, a friend of a friend um, owns a print shop, so he could do all of our signs and brochures for us, and he was very generous and donated all of that. Um, again, we knew somebody in the t-shirt business from our college days, and he created event t-shirts for us so that everyone that registered um, online would get a t-shirt as part of their um, registration ticket price. We talked to Como's and shared our story with the owners of Como's, and they decided to donate all of the venue costs, all of the server costs, all of the bartender costs, cleanup. So literally the only um, 
proceeds that or the only amount that was taken away from the ticket cost was the food cost. So everything else was donated, which was so generous. The entertainment was donated, so we had a live band. Um, and again, it was a friend of a friend who's son in a band, and then he plays with them sometimes. So he came and played um, live for the whole night. He was we were a little nervous about that one because neither neither Jim or I had heard him play before, but he was awesome and everyone loved him, the whole band, so it worked out really great. Um, we had a photo booth as well. My cousins uh, own a business and so they donated it and became a sponsor of the event, so that was great. We had um, silent auction items, so I think we had 35 silent auction items and those were all donated. And then we also at the event decided to do a 50-50 raffle and this was based on some feedback that we heard from friends who participated in these types of events before. Um, we did that and then we also had donation jars just kind of randomly set around the event um, so that if people were inclined they could just throw some cash in. So to register for the event, we did something very similar to Work Phone 2. We again involved FPWR and Susan early and often. We created um, web based registration through the FPWR website. Mm -hmm. And Sarah's going to pull it up for you. <laughs> um, it looks like maybe. <laughs> I think. Let me see if I yeah. can. It's this one. Can you see that? I can't. Oh, there it is. So, okay. there, so this is through the website, the FPWR website itself. And then Susan was able to create a event page for us that had all of the event information, dates, times, schedule of events, where it was, um, and then how to register, donate, or sponsor. So everybody could purchase um, it's online until a deadline before the event, um, or if they couldn't make the event, they could donate, and if they wanted to sponsor, they could sponsor as well. So that worked out really well, and actually for the type of venue that we had, we, um, we recommended that everyone buy tickets online because the food cost was tied to a per person. Um, a per person cost, so we wanted to have a really good idea of headcount as we were going into the event. So um, that was one thing that if we do this again, we'll probably try to figure out a way that we could keep better track of people that want to stay at the door. But for our first year, we just had everyone purchase them online. We had a list of guests that were going to attend. We had our own wristbands made for the party. And then we wristbanded everyone as they came in. And that's how um, they had access to this back patio where the event was located. The other thing we did is we still wanted to keep the event tied to one small step. So we created a one small step page. Um, and again, this was, we shouted out not only the event registration page, but probably every other day or every couple of days, we also shared our one small step page. And I actually got a, really, a lot of really good feedback on this. Um, we could write significantly more in the one small step um, text box about our personal story with coming to terms with Jack's diagnosis, getting involved in the One Small Step community, the types of um, research that Jack has already benefited from, um, and how he's doing his progress, and what we're looking forward to um, you know, in the future with, with additional research funding. And so we got a lot of good feedback that they liked this page, and they liked the fact that they could just donate through this page and hear our story. So that was something that I think worked out really well, even though sometimes it was a little confusing where people were donating. Um, I did get some good feedback that this liked this site too. So all together, the event execution. Sorry, my clicker is not working. <laughs> So I talked a little bit about the ticketing system that we had. We, we had everyone pre-register. Um, myself and my husband stood at the two entrances to the patio and we had a guest list. And everyone that came in got their wristband and their drink tickets. 
And we also had the silent auction item display right near the entrance so that everyone that was walking in could also walk by all the silent auction items and bid. Um, we had some great help from family. Um, my aunt and uncle and cousins went around the whole party and sold 50-50 raffle tickets and we did one arm for one arm's length for ten dollars and an arm span for twenty. And we were amazed at how many 50-50 raffle tickets we sold. Um, we had we had our schedule and as you guys saw it was right on the registration site. It was on all the save the date cards and everywhere we could post the schedule we posted it. Because our event was on a Thursday night, we knew we had to stick to the schedule so that everybody that was there would be able to um, hear their name if they were winners of silent auction items, hear their name if they were winners of the raffle tickets, etc. So my recommendation would be to have a schedule and set a schedule and try to stick to it. Um, because once we got through all of the events of the evening, obviously then it was just all kind of fun and dancing and photo booth and everything, but um, we did hear some good feedback that they were glad that some of the events wrapped up a little bit earlier in the evening so that people that had to get home and get to work the next day still didn't feel like they were missing out on anything. Um, the other thing that we did was we sent out, um, and we're still sending out, we're trying to catch up on our thank you notes. We had, um, Vistaprint was our best friend through this and helped us do, we did the save the dates via Vistaprint and um, we also did the thank you notes via Vistaprint. So we had, um, event thank you notes with the logo printed and um, for people that have received those we've also gotten some good feedback that just a personalized thank you note was really um, really nice to get. So the other thing so all in all our event um, we were blown away by how many people like I said was, were willing to donate auction items, um, buy raffle tickets on site, uh, donate to the event even without being able to attend, etc. So um, our event, we had probably close to 140 people there. Um, we only paid for 120, but I do know that there were some people that came um, and donated at the door. And again, that was something that we'll have to think about for next year or the next time that we do this because we had to have a better system for that. But um, we only paid for 120, <laughs> but we had a good crowd and we raised um, a significant amount of money for um, PWS research. So we just felt really humbled and just so grateful to everybody that pulled together and helped us throw this event. Yeah, that's really impressive being able to plan it from a different state. <laughs> um, Thanks. There's a question that was typed in by Alyssa, and it might have been during Laura's um, presentation, but she asked, how did you approach businesses? Can you give an example of the pitch you would give? I'm, I'm assuming for like sure. silent items or sponsorships. Yeah, so again, I, I think, I think for me, I was really nervous about it. I have, um, my mom is super outgoing and nothing embarrasses her, so I, I know, um, for, for myself, I, I gave my co-hosts some information like those sponsorship letters and silent auction item forms to solicit donations. And then I typed up basically what was on our One Small Step page and included Jack's picture and sent people out with those materials to speak from. And then literally, I, my mom did the first couple and she just walked into the business and asked to speak to the manager and then just shared that, you know, we're having this um, chari you know, charity benefit. Here's the story. Here's how it's going to go. Um, if you'd like to donate something, it's all tax deductible. And like I said, we were amazed at just how generous businesses and even individual people would be when approached with the story and the situation. So I don't think we had a very elaborate spiel, but it was just kind of overcoming that first hurdle of, it's always an awkward conversation, I feel like, when you're asking people for things and you don't even really know these people, but um, I would say overwhelmingly we were supported when we asked. And I think it's good, like, I'm more of an introverted person, so the first couple times I went, I went with a total extrovert, and then once I saw how easy it was, 
it made me feel more comfortable going and asking myself. Yeah. And I think it also helps to have, like you said, you had a, you handed your, um, the people who were going out for you, your story with a picture of your son. I think, um, we do that a lot when we're kind of pitching to businesses. I occasionally I'll have Lily with me if I have to, but, um, have having her picture on the letter that I hand them usually puts a face with the name and it's not just a, a story, but it's an actual person. But well, thank you so much, Laura. Do you think you'll do it at the same place next year? Actually, I think we're going to try to do it every other year because we feel like we kind of live in two states. I still feel very connected to Michigan as my home, but we live in Indiana. So yeah. I think um, next year we'll support Indiana events, and then the year after we'll do another Michigan event. Maybe we could switch off every other year. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. We'll do something. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> well, thanks again for sharing with us. Um, I am. I don't see any questions yet. So just as a reminder, anyone who has a question, you can go ahead and type that into the question box, and we'll get to that um, either as we're talking or at the end of, of the presentations. But Laura, thanks again. I'm going to go ahead and mute you now and unmute Jennifer, and hopefully that will all work out. I know she was having trouble earlier with her sound. Okay, sounds good. Is there anything else you have left to say before I mute you? No, I guess just that, um, you know, if anyone is thinking about throwing an event like this or is interested in seeing any of the materials that we created, started from examples of FPWR, but I'm more than happy to share what we created, too. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Okay, Jennifer, I am going to unmute you, and hopefully this works. Are you there? It says I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? I can, yes. Okay. And loud, loud and clear? Yes, it is clear. Okay, great. great. Um, I'll go ahead and start you. Actually, Jennifer is also from Indiana, so you have three of us Hoosiers here online. <laughs> but um, Jennifer, if you want to go ahead and get started and tell everybody about your event, that'd be great. Sure. So I'll start by saying um, when Jet was born and was in the NICU and um, having health issues, he got coined with our fighter Jet. Um, so that's why we ended up naming our event the, the annual Fighter Jet Classic. Um, I believe that my we have some early intervention therapists come to the house, and um, our physical therapists have spoken about a golf outing. They're kind of big in Indiana um, to raise money for a charity that he runs. And she left, and I was sitting on the couch, and I said, that's what I'm going to do. And so that was in November. And I called um, my kid's preschool teacher, who I know's husband golfs in a golf tournament like every weekend, and she goes in the evenings and has dinner after he um, after he golfs. There's always typically a dinner. So I called her and I said, this is what I want to do. I know Jim goes to a lot, and you attend a lot of dinners. Can you assist me? And she said yes. And so she gave me, they actually um, belong to one of the country clubs. And she went ahead and gave me the um, number of the woman in marketing at the country club. So I contacted them and had a, I set up a meeting with them and um, kind of went over what I wanted to do and advised to them that I didn't golf. I've never been to a golf tournament, didn't know anything about golf tournaments. And there was um, actually a pro with who I was talking to at the golf club, and he ran all of the golf stuff. His, like himself, so I had nothing to do with the golfing, which was great. Um, so if that if golf outings is something that you're looking forward to doing, try to see if there's somebody else that can run the scoring and the setup and all of that stuff for you. That was a big, huge help for me. So what my role was then um, when we when we spoke, we set a date. Um, I wanted to do it in the month of May, being that that is Awareness Month for PWS. So it was really important, you know, that that was the month that we chose. And then at that point, I just had to start brainstorming, and I'm kind of a controller, um, so I took on everything myself, being that I didn't know what I was doing. So to delegate tasks was really difficult, so in the beginning, it was strictly me um, doing all the legwork and trying to figure it out and, and securing things, and, and it took me a while to get things involved. So I didn't actually start requesting sponsorship from businesses until December 
Now, for your event, my future events, I did learn that a lot of your businesses, if you're going to solicit money from them, they'll actually already have budgeted for the following year. And so you might not get the opportunity then to get sponsorship from them. So if you are looking for that, you might want to start earlier in the season um, to go ahead and start soliciting for sponsorship. So I, too, as the other girls did, have a sponsorship letter that I mailed or hand-delivered, presented to businesses, thinking that the businesses were going to be my big sponsorship. Um, so in my sponsorship letter, I had four levels of sponsorship, um, and I thought that I was going to make all of my money um, through the platinum sponsorship, which was a $1,000 sponsorship. And as the sponsorships went, um, you received more uh, more inform you, got, you got information in your goodie bags, you got your name in the program, you got spoken at the end at the dinner. I mean you just got more the more money you spent. So we had platinum at a thousand, we had gold at five hundred, we had what we called the beverage cart sponsor at two fifty, and then we had a whole sponsor at a hundred. So obviously my goal was to get a sign at every hole, so my goal was for 18 sponsors on there. Businesses I found weren't as generous as I thought they were going to be. Um, I too did a lot of Facebook advertisement um, and put my files, I created a page and I actually put my sponsorship letter and my silent auction letter within that page and I received 42 whole, whole sponsors. So I actually, as you see in front of you, this is a triple signage on a hole because I had to do that. That was wonderful. Um, and I received five beverage cart sponsors, which their signs weren't that big on the beverage cart. So I'm actually just going to have them be beverage sponsors and give them a larger sign next year. We received six $500 sponsorships. Um, and those, again, were mostly from people pulling money together, um, my husband coaches football. It was his football team. Got together and raised 500. Um, I went to high school with. Got together and raised 500. I did have a business, and um, and then the thousand dollar sponsorship was from family members again. So the 42 sponsors of the whole sponsors, I would say, 32 of them were personal families, just donating money to help the cause. And major, a lot of them were fellow PWS families, so that was wonderful to get their support as well. Um, so we received the sponsorships that helped uh, helped counteract any monies that we thought we were going to have going out. Um, but to counteract that money as well, we received in-kind donations. And what that means is that you ask the business um, to provide their services. So we had um, a printing company print all of our programs for us and then we had a t-shirt company print all of our t-shirts for us. And those companies can actually submit an invoice and they can also have tax write-offs for their in-kind donations if they can give you the approximate amount um, that it would co uh, cost for them to do that. We also had um, we solicited silent auction items and raffle items. The raffle items kind of came as an afterthought. I went with the silent auction because I was having people contact me saying, how can I help, what can I do, what can I do? And being a controller and not knowing really what I needed to do at this point, I said, can you make a basket? Here's ideas on Pinterest. Oh, look, you're a jogger. Here's a jogging basket. How about we do a Sunday fun day and make it an ice cream basket? So. The people that I was asking, some I would help with ideas, others just took the reins. And so for our silent auction, we had over 60 items. Not all of them were baskets of things. Some of them were just some items. We solicited um, major sports arenas to get um, autographs. So we got an autographed picture from the Cubs. Uh, it was a stamped autographed Colts football. We got an autographed hat from the Pacers, which was local. Um, and then like I said, we had like other things that were donated and just all of it. I didn't have to pay for any selling auction items. They were all donated and that was 60 items. So then the raffle items, my cousins got together and actually gave us about a $300 what, what, what was going to be a silent auction item, which included a golf bag, a cooler, a GPS watch, some golf tees, golf balls. 
and I thought, you know, I don't know that I can get that amount um, out of it being a silent auction item, so I separated that out. We had some gift cards, so we had six items as a raffle item, the big one being a golf bag um, that on the receipt was a $100 item. We had a $50 um, restaurant gift card. We had three Home Depot $25 gift cards, and I cannot remember what the last item was, um, but we had six items for the raffle, and our raffle tickets were just a $10 ticket. So um, then we had to, we knew that we were offering the, the signage um, in our sponsorship, so then I had to find out how do I get the signage. So if you can, if you have connections and you can get it for free, and I actually went to this website and it actually told me they were going to be for free until I spoke to their marketing person. And then what I realized had happened and going forward next year is you actually ask for sign sponsors. So they told me that I could get 18 signs similar to the ones that were in front of you and they would cost, I want to say it was like $300 and, or $289. That would be my cost. Uh, and so since I was behind the eight ball, I had contacted a couple people about whole sponsorships and I said, you know what, if you want to bump your sponsorship to $300, your name will not just be on one T sign, as you see, example, the 2-2-T, but it'll be that, that one below the 2-2-T and it'll be on 18 signs. So the signs in front of you actually say um, this the sign is sponsored by ICF, which is a CrossFit company. So going forward next year, I will know to solicit sign sponsorship as well. So that's not a, a pocket. And we did have all of our signage then paid for through sponsorships. So the day of, or actually leading up to it, we um, I solicited a lot on Facebook had a website that you could register on. That was the easiest way. I also allowed people, because some people weren't so savvy, to go ahead and send me the money for a golf um, spot, for a golf registration. It was $100 per golfer, which seems to kind of be the going rate around here. And we profited about $50 of that. Um, the other went towards their golf, their green tea, their cart rental, and their dinner after the event and five dollars of each golfer went to the prizes that were given away for the top teams of the day. Um, so we registered um, and people registered and we actually ended up with 72 golfers and probably I would say 52 of them came in the last weeks of registration so I was very worried that we weren't going to have anybody there. We also offered people just to buy dinner tickets and attend dinner. The golf course charged us eleven ninety five a person for dinner and we um, charged fifteen dollars because we felt the more people that actually were able to come, the more awareness we were um, giving and the more people to go ahead and try to win these silent auction items. So total people at the event was 198 people. That included the dinner people. So the day comes, um, we, we were doing giveaway bags the night before at like 7.30 at night. Um, it was, you know, a little bag that had some sponsorship information in it because that was one of the things if you sponsored so much you could put something in our gift bag. We had a bottle of water, we had a ba bag of pretzels, we had some other giveaways from some companies like um, a golf ball scrubber, I think, was one, a can koozie, so just some odds and ends um, just to appease the golfers because I knew they were going to be out on the golf course for a while. And then each bag also had, we had the first annual Fighter Jet Classic t-shirt, and for those at a certain sponsorship level, your name got printed on the back of the t-shirt. And then I also printed the names of the PWS kids that donated for um, whole sponsorship as well on the back of the t-shirt. So that was our giveaways. Um, at the event when you registered, we had the silent auction set up and so the golfers would come in and we were selling then mulligans and yardsticks. There was one each. Um, the mulligans is for a team you could buy five for $20 and it gives you like a do-over. And then the yardstick was one per team and I think those were $10. 
and it allows you to move your ball forward um, until you run out of your yardstick. And every team got those. That was wonderful. Didn't expect that. We also did our raffle tickets, and in the state of Indiana, with a nonprofit group, you cannot gamble. So we actually had to produce a game of skill for these people to win their raffle ticket. So it was the easiest thing. You drop a golf ball into a coffee can. Oh my gosh, you're the winner. You win this raffle ticket. And it was a $10 chance. And I think coming through the registration, I want to. I'd like to also say everybody bought one. T at that point, it was like one ticket they would buy. And as I stated they had the chance to view the silent auction items. So during the tournament, once I saw like how much fun it, we were having, we really didn't know. We knew we were doing what was called the two-two hole. Um, some of your golf courses would call it a skirt hole, but um, we thought it would be cute. And the picture in front of you guys is Laura Capone's husband and my husband. Um, next year, we're going to shorten up those two-twos to make them really look like ballerinas. And so what happened is the, on the hardest hole of the course, um, the guys had an opportunity to tee off from the women's tee. And to do so, they paid $5, and they wore this tutu when they teed off. So we got some great pictures of some guys. Um, I was told that all but five, I'm sorry, all but four guys hit off the women's tee and wore their tutus. And those four that did not, did not hit it past the women's tee when they hit their shot. So... That was hopefully next year they'll go ahead and wear that too, too. So post tourney, the one thing that I want to say real quick, and I think that um, Laura Measley spoke on it, was she didn't want to keep the people too late. Our event was on a Saturday, but I, too, did not want to keep the people too late. Knowing that, our, that golf began, I think, at like 1230, I did not want to keep it and drag on. So I wanted to make sure the program kept rolling and kept rolling. Um, so we had to wait for all the teams to finish and get in for them to score the event and to see what, who was first, second, and third. But in the meantime, people came in. By this time, the golfers were more loosened up, families were coming in, wives were joining, husbands were joining, just families off the street who just bought tickets but didn't golf, they came in. Um, so it, the, my girlfriend said, why don't we try to sell raffle tickets now? And so now when people were more loose, people were buying $100 worth of raffle tickets, $50 worth of raffle tickets. So I would definitely, I was not going to push the raffle tickets, but that was a big seller then at the end. Um, so we had a buffet, hamburgers, hot dogs. People came in and ate as they wanted. And then this time, that was when they were able to view and bid on the silent auction items. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the silent auction after I go through these. We did have programs at the um, event they had PWS awareness facts in there and then it had the sponsorship people in there as well we did bid sheets for our silent auction which if anyone ever needs one I've I have passed them along to other people and I can definitely get you what I did um, and so People were up mingling doing the silent auction. I started every now and then I'd say, we're going to do our raffle tickets or we're going to do, I think I started with the door prizes. We had some like giveaways, nothing too expensive, a couple fighter jet shirts, a couple of gift bags that were given from um, McAllister's just to have some golf thing in it. So I broke things up. I'd do door prizes and then I'd let people mingle. And then I'd come in, I'd do raffle prizes and I'd let people mingle. Um, and then, and then we were all waiting for these the golfers to come off the golf course. So um, once the silent auction got to, I want to say about 15 minutes, I started the countdown. So I would say we have 15 minutes left in our silent auction. Then I went to like a five minute, and then I went to a three minute, two minute, one minute, and people were scurrying to get their bids in. It was in. So if you are going to do a silent auction, I know Laura Capone said she wished she would have. I would do the countdown because I think you're going to get more bids in, and people are going to try to outbid at that point. So I'm sorry. Now you can go ahead and go on. Sorry. So we actually, in the event itself, um, I was very happy. There were definitely some things that I would do differently. Um, I have solicited some feedback from people. What did you like? What did you not like? Um, of course, everyone speaks highly of it. I haven't really heard of anything negative. I would like some criticism, but I haven't really heard of much. 
I know for me, this once the silent auction was over with, it was insane um, trying to get. I read off the bid sheets and and you know who won what and how much they spent and that was exciting thing for everyone to hear. But then for people to come and pay and pick up their items, that was completely insane because like I said, we had 60 items to deal with and um, four people taking money and long lines. So I would definitely do that different. Um, we had a beverage sponsor, Monarch Beverage, brought some um, adult beverages for us to use. I don't know that I would use them next year, not not because it wasn't great, but it was kind of chaotic. I would rather just either get a discount, which they did. The golf course only charged us a hundred or a dollar seventy-five a beer, and we could charge whatever we wanted. Um, but I'm thinking about doing kind of sponsored holes as far as, not really sponsored holes, but beverage holes and having like margaritas at a hole, jello shots at a hole, gummy bears at a hole. Uh, there's local breweries and if they want to come and do a tasting and maybe like a wine tasting. So those are the things that I think I would definitely do different. Um, I too am doing thank you cards and I'm doing them a little bit different and, and the fact that I didn't want to get immediately after the event because I kind of want to drag this on. So I'm in the process of doing my thank you cards right now and then I'm going to do save the date cards in like September and then I'm going to start talking about it hot and heavy on Facebook. So I want to keep the event alive all year long, just maybe not so much in your face as it was from January to May. And uh, as I stated here, planning for it's definitely going to begin. It's, it's ongoing. But as far as my sponsorships to businesses, it's definitely going to start in September. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm definitely coming next year. <laughs> that sounds like oh. a lot of fun. Oh, um, I did want to say that was the well, that was one of the best things uh -huh. was I I'm a talker. If you guys haven't known that, but to get up and speak about PWS in front of a group of people and not be emotional, I wasn't for sure I could do that. So I did not do my awareness points. I did not promote it a lot on the microphone. But what did happen is we had, I'm trying to think, five, five PWS kids at the event. Mm -hmm. And after we spoke, all the kids went outside for photo op and people gathered around and they saw them and they they saw how they were and how loving. I mean, it, that was like the best thing, and that's what I hear from people is that they appreciate to be able to see these kids and in, in various ages, and so our people enjoyed seeing that. We have a few questions, and I'm going to go ahead and unmute both Laura's. I hope they're prepared for that, <laughs> um, so that you can all answer the questions that we have. Um, Laura Measley, I just unmuted you, and Laura Capone. Oh, she's muted herself. Um, Laura Capone, if you can unmute yourself. Okay, awesome. So what is the biggest hurdle you had to overcome that you didn't anticipate? Or the hardest part of the process? Can any of you answer that? This is Jen Lee. Um, I would say for me, letting go of the control and allowing other people to help me. That was a huge hurdle. Um, so don't take it on yourself. Let other people help you. And um, but other than that, like it was kind of easy. Yeah, I had yeah. a lot of help from friends and it it made it it made it pretty easy to talk to people and ask for donations and stuff like that. Yeah, this is Laura Measley. I would second what Jen said. I'm usually a control freak, and to be trying to coordinate everything from out of state was just driving me crazy. I'm also eight months pregnant right now, so mm -hmm. I was in the throes of pregnancy and work trips and everything else, and so it really was, it was the hardest thing for me to do, but it was the best thing to do was just to let people who wanted to be involved and who were really passionate about it um, sort of lead different initiatives around the event, like arranging the venue, soliciting silent auction items. Um, I retained control of a lot of the logistical things, but I definitely relinquished control of a lot of the fun things, like 
prizes and entertainment and venue um, to people who really were excited about doing those things. Um, another question is, how did you estimate how many people you would have show up for your first year as far as food and supplies go? So I remember being, this is Lormis again, and I remember being in one of these webinars last year, I think, and Tanya Johnson spoke. And one thing that really struck me was she started their first walk with her wedding um, invite list. And so that's actually where we started too. We started with our wedding invite list and we sort of went through and kind of ballparked like who we know would come for sure, who was a maybe, um, and who we didn't think would come um, because of the location or whatever reason. So we actually started with that list and that gave us sort of a ballpark figure and we were actually thinking we'd probably have between 75 and 100 people come. And then, like I said, we had closer to 140 come. Um, we went over a little bit on our initial estimate, but that gave us kind of a good grounding of how many people we thought would be there. All right. Um, and Steve Sanders just said, you guys are awesome. <laughs> I got that. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> um, I did want to really fast go over a few quick points, um, if I can find them. So just as a reminder, based on what everyone has said and based on my own experience, um, the best advice that we can give as a host, choose an activity that you're passionate about. Um, for instance, like I chose to do um, a kid-friendly activity. We're having a, uh, instead of a walk, we're doing a giant kid-friendly obstacle course. And I felt like getting my friends involved and my my children's friends involved um, and having them all participate is really what keeps me going because I know I'm doing it for them um, and I'm doing it for all of our kids, really. So pick something that you'll be passionate about and just run with it. Um, it helps to have people, anyone who offers help, take it. If they say, what can I do? Give them something. It doesn't matter what it is. Give them something. Um, I last year was my first event and I had family and friends offer to help the day of and then when it was over they're like we had no idea it was going to be this huge please let us know what we can do next year so then now that this year is coming up they already know their jobs and I've had people just take on responsibilities that I didn't even know they would take on so like Laura Measley had said she had a friend or her mom and some friends would take on getting sponsorships or getting um, silent auction items. You shouldn't have to do that on your own. So don't be afraid to ask people to do that for you. Um, arm them with a letter or an email and a picture and just kind of help guide them to do that. And if you have extroverted friends, it's perfect for them. So. Um, We've gotten some really awesome silent auction items this year because I finally just let someone else do it. <laughs> but uh, there's there are so many different ways to go about just letting people run with certain areas. Um, also, the pamphlets and the webinars that we host, um, all of the items that are in, when you sign up to be a host of any event, Susan will um, get you signed up on the One Small Step webpage. And with that, you have um, the host management tab. And in that tab, you have all of these resources. You have um, sponsorship letters, you have fundraising packets, you have different letters to amusement parks. I mean, you have all of these letters that you can use um, and edit to work for your own event. So definitely take those and use them as your resources. It's really, it's a really great thing to have and it's all in one place. And also don't be afraid to ask any of us, anyone who's hosted an event before, we're all in this together, we're all doing it together. Um, we all wanna support you if, if you're new to hosting or if you're a veteran host and you wanna add to what you're doing, um, just, ask. I know Susan is always happy to help with um, answering those questions. I'm happy to help with answering those questions. We have a whole One Small Step committee who's happy to help. So don't be afraid to ask. Um, 
and I think that's about it. That's about all we have, unless there are any other questions for the presenters. Um, let me see if. Sorry, I'm trying to unmute. Susan, are you available? Are you there? Hi, Sarah. Hi. I am. Thank you so much for hosting this wonderful webinar. It's incredibly informative. Um, even for me, listening to some of the things that you guys have said, it's um, I really I learn a lot from these these wet sharing times. Um, and I'm incredibly impressed by the skill of our newest hosts. So thank you, Laura, Laura, and Jen, for sharing some of your experience with everybody. Thanks for letting us. Yeah, yeah thank you. There is one more resource that I would love to mention. I don't know if she's on our call tonight, but we recently hired a uh, development director for our organization to help our fundraising through um, their fundraising experiences. So if you have any questions and you need resources, we have a wonderful person. Her name is Hannah Berger, and she's here to help all of you with your fundraising endeavors. All right. Um, well, thank you everyone for joining us tonight for the webinar. I hope that everyone got something to take away. Um, I wish I had put my email address out here, but you can find me on Facebook if you have any questions. All of us are on Facebook. Um, or go ahead and type into the One Small Step Facebook page if you have more questions for tonight. And thanks so much for joining us. I hope that you all join us for the next webinar and um, have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thanks.